Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm now answering question number seven from the October November 2019 International GCSE Cambridge uh, Paper 4 Extended. This is pre the new syllabus, but this topic is within the new syllabus, which started in 2020. And the question is, uh, um, questioner, one of the students has asked me to answer one of the parts of this question. So I'll just go through the whole whole question for completeness sake. And, um, you know, I'll get to that. I think it was the very last part that he wanted me to answer. But I'm going to go through the whole question just to make so I've, co I've answered the whole thing. So now question number seven, part A says, find f minus 3. So given us three functions, f of x equals 7 minus 2x, g of x equals 10 over x, where x can't be 0, otherwise it's undefined, and h of x equals 27 to the power of x. So first of all, they say find f minus 3. What that means is you replace the x in this function with negative 3. You see the x, the negative 3 here is in place of the x. So you take this function and wherever you see x, you replace it with negative 3. So 7 minus 2 times negative 3 is going to be 7 plus 6, which is 13. So there's the answer to part A. And then it says, find HG30. So what it means is, you've got to first find what G30 is. So first you find what G30 is. And whatever that is, you, re you substitute that into the function H. That's what it means. So first of all, let's find what G30 is. Now G30 is when we take function G and we replace the X with 30. So G30 is going to be 10 over 30, which is 1 third. And then we take the function h, and we um, basically, you replace the x with one third. You basically have to find h of one third. That's what it means. So here, h g30 means find what g30 is, which is one third, and replace that in function h with, the, replace the x in function h with one third, which is going to be 27 to the power of one third. Now, 27 to the power of one third means the cube root of 27, which is 3. The cube root of 27 is three so there's the answer to part two of this question number seven um now we're going to go to part three it says find inverse f of x so we have f of x equals y seven minus two x now to find the inverse function the first thing you do is you take the function the original function and you call it y equals so y equals seven minus two x and then wherever i see the y i'm going to replace it with an x and wherever I see an x, I'm going to replace it with a y. And then when I make y the subject, okay, if I rearrange this to make y the subject, what I'm left with will be the inverse function. So the way I would like to make y the subject here um, is keep the y term positive. So I'll add 2y to both sides, and I'll take away x from both sides. So I have 2y equals 7 minus x. Then I've got to divide both sides by 2, so 7 minus x all divided by 2. So that's the inverse function, 7 minus x over 2. Alternatively, some people from this step, they might say, oh, let's subtract 7 from both sides. So you have x minus 7 equals negative 2y, and then divide by negative 2, which will give you x minus 7 over negative 2 equals y. And this is also perfectly fine as an answer. You could write this as your answer, or you could write this as your answer. Both of them are perfectly fine. 7 minus x over 2, or x minus 7 over negative 2. It's basically the same thing. All right, let me just put that neater so it's clearer. Okay, they're both exactly the same thing. All right, it's like writing minus 2 over 3 or, or 2 over minus 3. They're actually both the same. Okay, so these are both the same. All right, so there's the answer to part 3 of this question. And now we're going to go on to the next part of this question, which is part B. It says, solve the equation g 2x plus 1 equals 4. So basically what it is, is we take function g. And we replace the x with 2x plus 1. So g, 2x plus 1. That's going to be equal to 10 over. And you replace the x with 2x plus 1. So 10 over 2x plus 1. And then we got to equate that to 4. So we have two, 10 over 2x plus 1. We have to solve the equation when you make this equal to 4. Okay, that's what it means. So this is gx, g, 2x plus 1 equals 4. Solve this equation. Find the value of x that makes this true. So multiply both sides by 2x plus 1 gives you 8x plus 4, just multiplying both, both sides by this. So 4 times 2, 2x is 8x, 4 times 1 is 4. 10 minus 4 is 6, so 6 equals 8x. Divide both sides by 8, 6 over 8 equals x. So x equals, in the simplest form, 3 over 4. So that's the answer to part B of this question. And now we're moving on to part C. 
So simplify giving your answer as a single fraction. So you have 1 over f of x plus g of x. So I've got to take f of x, put 1 over that function. So 1 over 7 minus 2x, that's 1 over f of x, plus g of x, which is 10 over x. And I have to make this into a single fraction. So there's a number of ways I can do that. One way I can do that is to make them as equivalent fractions. I say, OK, I'll make the denominators the same. So I have to find the lowest common multiple of the denominators, which is x times 7 minus 2x. Both of these will be x times 7 minus 2x. And how does this become x times 7 minus 2x? We'll have to multiply this by x. So therefore, I multiply the top by x as well. Multiply both top and bottom by x. So it becomes x over 7, x times 7 minus 2x. And this, I have to multiply both top and bottom by 7 minus 2x. 7 minus 2x. So this becomes basically 10 times 7 minus 2x. Now these are equivalent fractions. With the same denominator, I can write them under the single denominator of x, 7 minus 2x. Then I'm left with x. I've got plus 70 and minus 20x. Okay, because you're going to have 10 times minus 2x is minus 20x. And that will give us, now if you simplify our answer in its simplest form, we have 70 minus 19x over x times 7 minus 2x. So we can leave our answer like that. That's perfectly fine. You can also write it in expanded form. You could write this as 7x minus 2x squared, but there's no need to do that. That's fine. There's an alternative method that we could have used. Is What we could have done, we could have just like multiplied the denominator together straight away. So you have x times 7 minus 2x, and then x times this number is x, and 7 minus 2x times that number is 10 times 7 minus 2x, in which case you get exactly the same thing. This will be x plus 70 minus 20x. So you're going to have minus 19x plus 70 over x times 7 minus 2x. Exactly the same thing. So that's basically a shortcut way of doing the same thing here. And that's fine if you do that. Now for the actual question that I was asked, which was um, find the inverse h of 19,683. Now it's a one mark question. There's not much space for you to do it. All right. So it's something which uh, in this this uh, topic here, a lot of students get confused about this. How do we find the inverse function of, of h? This is 27 to the power of x. Okay, how can we find the inverse of that? And if we if we try to do it, you will realize very quickly that it's, it's very difficult to do this because we have to make here the y the subject and this y is stuck in the power. How do we deal with that? Well, we deal with that using something later on, which we don't know about now, logarithms, which we don't need to go into. So we don't need to go that, that route. What we have to do is understand what it means by the inverse function. Okay, so now, the way I like to explain this is like, um, like I do when we're dealing with graphs of functions and inverse functions. What we do is this. We think, okay, if the question said h of 19,683, for example. All right? Now, as we did before, that means that you have to replace the x with this number inside the bracket, because this thing has taken the place of the x. So if it, if this was the question, then it would be 27 to the power of 19,683. But this is not the question. Okay, this is not the question. All right? The x that normally, you know, the number here that normally takes the place of the x is in the inverse function. So instead of taking the place of the x, it takes the place of the y. This is actually y equals 27 to the power of x. So instead of replacing the x with this number, I'm going to replace the y with this number instead. So this is going to be 19,683 is equal to 27 to the power of x. And that's the equation I have to solve. All right. So normally this will take the place of the x, but it doesn't. It takes the place of the y instead. Okay, why? Because this is the inverse function. So whenever you have a question like this, and they ask you something like that, you say, okay, what would I do if the inverse wasn't there? Uh, I'd put this number instead of the x. But because the inverse is there, I have to put it instead of the y. Okay, instead, I have to I have to replace the y with that number instead of the x because it's the inverse function, and we're kind of like doing the reverse or the opposite. So that's how we're going to think about this question here. All right, so we have to solve this equation. Now, how do we solve this equation? Well, obviously, there must be a power of 27, okay, which we have to find, which gives us this number. So how do you find that? Well, we can just take our calculator and we can just use some trial and error. Because, okay, 27 to the power of 2. That doesn't give us the right answer. Let's carry on. 27 
to the power of 3 it gives us the right answer. So we know that this is the same as 27 to the power of 3 equals 27 to the power of x, therefore x must equal 3. Okay, very simple question, um, really, if you just understand what we're doing here. So this way of solving these kind of problems in this particular type of question, you have to deal in this way. Okay, there's no other way of doing it because you can't find the inverse of this function unless you go into a topic which is not in our syllabus, which comes later on. Um, and that's even more complicated than doing it this way, actually, because the numbers here are easy to deal with. So, you know, you just basically, if it said, you think about what it is without the inverse, this is going to take the place of the x. Because it's the inverse, it takes the place of the y instead. Okay, and then you say, okay, 19,683 equals 27 to the power of something. Well, they're not going to give you a question which um, doesn't work out to be the same power or a similar power to this. So you just try a few numbers and you'll see you get exactly the same answer when you do 27 to, the, uh, 27 to the power of 3. That means that x must be 3. 27 to the power of 3 gives you this number, and there's the answer. Uh, thank you for watching. Other questions from this particular paper, when I get around to answering them, can be found in the playlist that should appear in this area over here. Other questions from functions in um, IGCSE can be found in the playlist appearing in this area. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.